Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, thanks for joining back in. Have you got your refreshments? Okay, uh, let's share the. Okay, we finished uh, this entire section on page 52 on commitment to the local church. Uh, right? Um, any other questions besides what Thomas, Thomas was uh, asking? Okay. Any other questions regarding um, uh, commitment? Okay. Uh, just a few additional points or thoughts that you can, uh, you know, just uh, make a note of. Um, is uh, some of the points uh, in, in, which is not mentioned in the notes, uh, which can be considered as commitment to the, to the local church, is when you say that you're committed to a local church, saying you are committed to being present, uh, you know, you're committed there to, you know, to serve, you're committed to praying for to one another, for one another, to encourage one another to stand in the gap. You're committed to giving uh, your tithes and offerings to the church. Uh, you're committed to the service, right? And so, uh, it's, 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 it's so scriptural as well. So, you know, the value of commitment is uh, explained so beautifully in the Bible throughout, right? God uh, is a prime example, is the ultimate example of commitment. Like he is committed to his people. Right? Jesus was committed to his uh, ministry and his mission on earth. I mean, imagine if Jesus was distracted, uh, you know, like, like one of the characteristics we saw that you know of an of an uncommitted person is they're not focused they're double minded imagine if jesus was double minded it's like oh, should i do, do i really have to do this i mean where would we be now you know so jesus was committed to his ministry and his mission uh, the disciples were committed to following christ and uh, the apostles were committed to their mission uh, you know that they were they were committed to going out and making disciples because that was the great commission uh, that was given to them, isn't it? Uh, so they were committed to their call uh, in sharing the good news. So, and and while all these it seems like a big commitments, like in all of these big com big commitments, there were small ones, right? So like small choices that were made that had big impacts. So commitment is. It doesn't always necessarily have to be big and uh, you know whatnot. But anyway, so um, in conclusion, what was the highlight or what was the key takeaway from that section is uh, in our, our commitment to a local church. You need to ask yourself: Are we committed to your local church only when there is good music or uh, nice sermons and uh, everything seems to be calm and easy going? Or are you committed even when the church goes through some stormy weather? Like, are you are you committed when 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 there are hard times? When the church is going through a hard times? Okay, will you still be around to help the church, help one another in the church? Okay, so that's the that's the importance and the uh, and the power of commitment. All right. Uh, so the next section is talking about personal accountability personal accountability. Uh, worship team members are required to hold themselves to a high level of personal accountability. Uh, what is that? Uh, it is self-governing ability and an expression of spiritual maturity. Okay, personal accountability is self-governing abilities. Your ability to self-govern, to check on yourself, is like, hey, where do you stand, you know, uh, spiritually? Uh, are you the right place uh, with God? How's your walk with God been, and all of that? So, being able to self-examine, um, self-govern, uh, and also an expression of spiritual maturity—that's what 
that's the result of uh, personal accountability okay so here are some practical ways in which personal accountability can be expressed okay one worship team members ensure that they spend personal time with god in reading his word in prayer and in personal worship uh and so it, it in so many ways this is again connected to commitment are you committed to spending time with the lord are you committed to you know spending time in prayer with him in personal worship um so you know worship team members ensure that they spend personal time with god in reading his word etc okay and second worship team members ensure that they live holy and do not walk in sin okay worship team members ensure that they live holy and do not walk in sin um, if a worship team members this is very important guys pay attention to this right if a worship team member feels at any point that their personal spiritual life is dry and not where it should be or if they come into some form of addiction or bondage uh, in area where they are in consistent sin, like the secret sin, uh, as, as they would call it, right? If a worship team member feels at any point they are struggling with their spiritual walk in life, they can do two things. One, voluntarily ask the worship pastor or the location worship coordinator to not roster them for a period of time. Okay, and reach out to anyone of the pastors at APC for spiritual help to be strengthened. So what is, what is important here is now we give them an option to take a break. Okay, it's like, okay, you know, you're going through a hard time. Yeah, fine. Uh, we all understand that. We all go through that uh, and whatnot. But we can take a break. But what you do in that break is very important right you can't just take a break you know i'm going through this rough patch uh you know dark times i'm constantly sinning consistently sinning uh so i'm going to take from the worship team i'm i don't want to be rostered i'm not going to sing or play anything okay sure you can take a break and in the break you cannot continue uh to do what you were doing but instead we encourage them okay you can still be in contact with me. You can still be in touch with me. I am available to pray for you, or, you know, with the pastors or worship coordinators. Um, so that way, once again, they are expressing their personal accountability, right? So once their spiritual life is back to where it should be, they can inform the worship pastor, worship coordinator to be rostered again. Okay. Um, so all of these points, once again, is to highlight these are some practical ways in which personal accountability to be, can, which can be expressed. Okay, guys? Um, these are all just the practical ways. Uh, point four. If a worship team member feels that their skill in a certain area needs to be worked on, they should voluntarily ask the worship pastor or the coordinator to not roster them for a period of time until they are able to improve their skill level sufficiently to acceptable standards and only after that ask to be rostered again right? they can work with the worship pastor on you know uh, on their respective skills ahead or take classes or other means to make improvements in their skill levels Okay, so all of this is uh, just taking accountable, personal accountability. Isn't it? Like, uh, I'm not able to sing and pitch. I'm not, I want to increase my range. I want to get better in keeping time, uh, you know, singing with the rhythm. Uh, I'm not able to do that. I want to do all of that. So I'm, I'm going to take a quick, I'm going to take a break for a month or two. I work on my skill. Again, you can't take a break and not do anything, right? You are expected to work on that skill, get better, and come and join the team again. But for you to accept that, the problem with musicians is that they never think they are bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, and, and musicians are one of the most, me being a musician myself, is we are one of the most sensitive people on earth very easy to get offended it's like hey what you're playing like that 
it's like hey, who are you to tell me you know as if you can play better than me <laughs> you know you get what i'm saying right we are very sensitive people uh you know it's very dangerous to uh it's it's a, a very risky thing to <laughs> uh to work with musicians sometimes and just just be me being musician being very honest but it it takes a immense level of maturity uh, to come to terms saying is like hey i am not as good as i should be so i'm i want to take a break i want to work on that skill and get better and then rejoin the worship team okay um moving on if a worship team member sees that they are unable to sufficiently practice and prepare before coming for rehearsals and ministry and time for ministry once again they should uh, they should voluntarily ask the worship pastor coordinator to not roster them for a period of time until they are able to discipline themselves to practice and prepare for rehearsals and ministries okay if a worship team member sees that they are unable to sufficiently practice and prepare if they are unable to sufficiently practice and prepare for what before coming for rehearsals if they are not able to prepare uh, for their song lists if they are not able to prepare learning the songs that were sent to them uh, or if you are leading worship if you are if you are not able to send out the song lists in well in advance uh, at apc we expect the worship leaders to send out their song list by tuesday or latest latest okay we kind of put the mark on tuesday by tuesday evening they are to send out the song list to their team members uh, or it is by wednesday there's no choice now if the worship leader is not able to prepare sufficiently or you know practice enough to send out and if that's the pattern week after week after week and that's been the case for two three months uh, either that person should uh, see that they are not able to give uh, prepare or the leadership will have to uh, you know uh take the necessary step uh, based on the feedbacks that's been received so once again we encourage them to take a break uh you know because again guys we have to be honest right uh, unlike most of the churches in the west or in other countries uh, where they can afford to hire full-time musicians right full-time musicians uh, paid musicians for the church so that means their job is that they are a musician for the church like full time but that's not always the case in church at least in most of huge percentage like 99.99.5 percent at least i would say of the churches in india uh I don't necessarily function that way because there's so many things to be taken into consideration so we have people like doctors engineers students you know uh, uh homemakers all people like them part of the worship team who are not professional musicians necessarily but you know some of the it professionals who work for long hours in a day um so we have we understand all of that isn't it but at the same time we are not going to say it's like oh yeah you know you uh you work for you you are a professional in a different field um so you can play however you would like to play you can sing however you would like to sing uh no we can't do that isn't it uh, when they say that i'm going to be committed to the worship team they're also saying i'm going to commit myself to improve get better right um so that's what happens uh you know that's what is expected uh of this point if they're not able to practice and prepare uh, we encourage them to take a break work on them uh, and then get back and the sixth point here is if a worship team member recognizes that they are unable to be a regular at attending sunday services uh, which could be which could happen due to several personal reasons they should inform the worship pastor worship coordinator and voluntarily ask not to be rostered for a period of time till things change at their end okay notice if a worship team member recognizes that they are unable to be regular at attending sunday services for whatever genuine reasons that they might have they are again encouraged to take a break 
So once they are able to be regular in attending the Sunday services, they are actively receiving word, being preached, and are connecting to the local church family and body consistently for a period of time, then they can uh, ask the worship pastor again to be rostered. Okay. Um, and then finally, the seventh point is, if a worship team member feels that they are not aligned to the vision, mission, and values, or the culture of APC, uh, does not feel connected with the worship ministry at APC, or feels disconnected from APC as a local church family and body, uh, they should, of their own accord, discuss this matter with the worship pastor or with any of the pastors at APC. And during this period, they should ask once again, voluntarily ask not to be rostered. Okay. Uh, now this can happen to anybody, isn't it, guys? Um, it can happen to any individuals, uh, you know, saying it's like, yeah, you know, I'm not resonating with your vision, with the values. So I want to move on, try a different church and whatnot. We, we, we don't force, we can't force, uh, but if that's what they feel, that's what they feel. We encourage them to uh, not minister during this time and until they make up their mind. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Is, is it making sense? Uh, okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I, I really hope. Um, I, I mean, I, I, at no no point, uh, you know, in this discussion, I want you to feel like, oh, it's not important uh, for me because I'm not a musician. I don't want you to think that. I want you to look at this whole thing as you yourself as a leader or, you know, uh, or one day going to be a senior pastor of a church and where you will have a worship pastor or, uh, you know, under your supervision. And these are the things that, you know, you'll be, uh, you should have in place to have a healthy worship ministry. Okay, so I hope yes, there is really something that you can take off. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and just in conclusion, uh, just a few notes at the bottom. So all of the above are expressions of personal accountability. It is only when an individual does not voluntarily exercise, okay? L listen to this. It is only when an individual does not voluntarily exercise personal accountability. That means if that person does not come and tell, I'm going through this by themselves, I want a break, uh, I'm having a hard time, I'm unable to do this. If that does not happen, then uh, the leadership at APC the leadership will address this matter and take necessary corrective measures with that individual. Okay, it means that we will step and say, it's like, hey, it is noticed. It is uh, come to our notice uh, with feedbacks that you haven't been able to prepare as much as we would like you to be. Uh, it is noticed that you are not in line with our vision or mission. It is noticed that you are not attending the Sunday services uh, all on, on, on the Sundays that you are not serving. And then as a leadership, you know, at ABC, we have to take corrective measures, isn't it? it it's good. So accountability is also established secondarily through team meetings where spiritual life uh, as well as growth of a worship ministry is reviewed. Okay, um, so that's just a food for thought. And now in conclusion, here's just a simple roadmap for nurturing worshipers. Okay, so we've looked at, uh, you know, what what is expected of our worship team members. We expected them to be committed we are expecting them to have personal accountability. Now, once we as a worship ministry have this two from the individual, their commitment and their personal accountability, uh, what is our commitment to them? What is our accountability to the worship team members? Our accountability to them, uh, our commitment to them is that we will nurture them. 
Okay, so in order to fulfill our vision, we need to develop people uh, to help us get there. Okay, here is a roadmap on how we aim to develop people. Uh, in this case, worshippers to the to develop the local church in the area of worship. Okay, so this is a roadmap which we use to uh, develop, um, to empower, to equip um, the the worship team members at our local church in the area of worship. Okay. So here we go. Uh, this is the simple journey. So you have a person, uh, you know, who wants to join the worship team. Uh, and, but then we see if they are committed. And once we find that they are committed, we uh, you know, they can register to audition. Okay. And they can register to audition. And then there's uh, tier one, tier two, tier three, and we look at what happens. So this is the person, a believer with gifts, skills in music and vocals. Okay. Who can sing, who can lead worship, uh, who can play an instrument or instruments. So this is that individual. And then here we have uh, growing in the word, in the spirit and living a godly life, growing as a worshiper, commitment to the local church. Okay, so once all of this is filtered, then the prep starts. So worship team prep. As a part of preparation, we first help people grow spiritually, grow as worshipers and establish commitment to the local church. Only after this, we let them audition for the worship team. Okay, as part of the preparation, we first help them grow spiritually, grow as worshippers. Only after that, we let them audition for the worship team. And then after that, in the orientation process, in T1, what is happening is, there's orientation and initial training. Okay, so we have an APC's worship team uh, training manual. We share that with them. Okay, so that's what happens. Uh, you know, what is expected is to lead congregation to sing and worship the Lord. Uh, and, then, and then the next step is ongoing training plus growing. This is the step two of how we nurture them, right? Ongoing training uh, and gr plus growing. That is in spontaneous and prophetic worship, the band moving further in this area, leading the congregation into regular experiences of God's presence, release prophetic songs, flow in spontaneous, spirit-inspired worship. And then again, step three, this thing continues of ongoing training plus growing is leading congregation into personal encounters with God with demonstrations of God's power through healing and deliverance. As a church, we become a habitation of God, his dwelling. Okay, um, so there is no end to nurturing our worship team members. There is always, you know, training and growing. There's always this ongoing training and on, you know, ongoing uh, worship team retreats where we, we held workshops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so the commitment is we encourage them to grow in the word. We grow, encourage them to grow in the spirit. We encourage them to live a godly life, uh, grow as a worshiper and be committed to the local church. Okay, uh, so this is the roadmap for nurturing worshipers. Um, and this is what is followed at APC. Any, any questions about this, please? Any questions? I mean, um, do you think uh, it it can help you in uh, in your church where you are placed at, um, or how different is it in your church? Okay, I see that in the chat section. Uh, 
right. Uh, Kanan, Siddharth, are you guys okay? Yeah. Okay, guys. Okay, so that that is the end of uh, chapter four uh, in um, in page fifty five. Okay, so uh, now we go on to chapter five. So chapter four was all about worship ministry in the local church, and we looked at all the organizational aspects of it. Right, um, all the organizational aspect, how it's organized, uh, everything that is expected of the worship team members. Now, we, this chapter is all about the spiritual aspects of uh, the worship ministry, okay? It just goes into the spiritual expectations of a worship team member. And, and, and so, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at it, uh, how this goes. So, worship ministry, uh, the spiritual aspect. Spiritual requirements of a worship team member in a local church. First thing is we uh, we expect them to be worshippers on stage. That is, in our church services, apart from the pastor preacher, it is the worship team that has direct spiritual impact on the lives of the people in the congregation. Hence, the worship ministry is an important part of a spiritual ministry of the local church. Okay. Um, it is the worship team that has the direct impact, uh, a spiritual impact on the lives of the congregation. And, and that is very, very true. Okay, it is most of the time, it's the worship team that kind of sets the culture. It's the worship team that, uh, that sets the hunger level and the desperation level for God in the church. If the worship team is not hungry, if the worship team is not desperate, the church is not going to be hungry. The church is not going to be desperate. Okay. It is the worship team that has a direct spiritual impact on the lives of people in the congregation. Right. We see that in the Old Testament time and time after again. It was the worshippers, the Levites carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of everybody else at the back. The, the army was at the back. It was the worshippers that, that led uh, you know, the, the bunch of uh, warriors into the battlefield, okay? So worship ministry is an important part of a spiritual ministry of the local church. So as a worship team, we are worshipers both on and off stage with the lifestyle of worship. We are not a talented group using our skills to perform, entertain, and please people. We are not just a skillful music band or excellent church band that sings spiritual songs. Okay? We are worshippers on stage and off stage. Right? On stage, we are worshippers who worship God with our gifts and skills as we invite the congregation to join us as we worship God ourselves. We are really facing God and not the people. Okay, guys? So... Key, key points here um, for you to meditate on. Worshippers on and off stage, uh, living a lifestyle of worship. Um, that is, again, going back to one of the points that we learned about, uh, you know, one of, for the four relationships that make or break us. Again, if you remember, four relationships that makes or break us. One, one of them is your relationship at home as well, isn't it? Uh, how is your with your family? How is your relationship with the family? Okay, that is you being a worshiper off stage. Uh, one of the aspects. Of it. Okay, um, so three areas of responsibility uh, to grow spiritually in this aspect. Three areas of responsibility. One is a personal life and testimony, and commitment to the local church and personal accountability once again. Okay, three areas of responsibility is personal life and testimony, commitment to the local church, and personal accountability. 
Okay, so let's quickly look at our personal life and accountability. But uh, before I just continue, I want to ask again your, uh, your thoughts on um, why is it important to be worshippers on stage and off stage? Why do you think it's important? I want to speak to me. Why is it important? Kiran, Prince, talk to me. Anybody? The people who stand on the stage or uh, pulpit to worship the Lord, the congregation will observe them. Uh, at the same time, when they see off stage their behavior, it's not aligned to the way of their worship mm. uh, that will affect the <laughs> brethren's faith or uh, their spiritual walk. And there is a chance some people go in a wrong way as well. Casually, they also worship, they also do, they also all things. What is there? Some people take it casually like that. Some people, uh, so many things are there. It's very important, not only the worship team, even the pastors and yeah. everything. It's on stage and off stage. It's very important. Yeah, I mean, so you're saying that uh, uh, they are very influential uh, their right. life is very influential, isn't it? Uh, so, so, right. Yeah. so right, right. how they live their life off stage can influence a person, uh, you know, either the right way or the wrong way, isn't it? That actually, so there was a, a leadership committee, okay, that 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 met that gathered together for a summit, okay, and the challenge uh, for this leadership committee was to. Uh, come up with a, a sentence or a word to summarize leadership in like, you know, in one word or one sentence. And after discussion and whatnot, these, they came down uh, and said that leadership, if it has to be defined in one word or sentence, the ultimate word would be influence. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, as a uh, worshippers off stage, uh, Worshippers off stage, we have to be very careful because we are very influential off stage and people are watching, like you said, Thomas. Yes. And uh, Kiran is sharing, we can see on stage how that person easily, and we can recognize them, how that person is uh, real. Uh, you mean off stage, Kiran? Then you can feel free to unmute your microphone. On the stage, okay. yes, sir. yeah, but so, uh, but my question again, but again to everybody is, uh, um, why is it important to be worshippers on stage and off stage as well? Off off the stage is when you're not on stage. Uh, why is it important to continue being a worshipper? <laughs> it's not a tricky question, Aaron. What do you think? Yeah, Pastor, uh, I agree with uh, Brother Thomas, what did he told just now, because, uh, see, uh, some people under, it can see any church or any ministry, but some people used to, you know, uh, worship on Sunday, they used to worship so powerfully in, on, on the stage or on Sunday morning, but, mm. um, but sometimes, um, but right after the Sunday service, from, from starting from the Monday itself, so, they used to mm. act differently. So, mm. yeah, it really matters. Even on all of the stage, we have to be worshipper as well. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. And uh, Prince, what do you think? What do you have to say? Prince, Mr. Prince. Okay. 
All right, so I think uh, we kind of agree on the importance of being worshippers on stage uh, and on and off stage, right? Um, so that's one. But let's just continue now with first our personal life and testimony. Our personal walk with God, along with the skills he has given us, is what qualifies us as a worship team member. Our personal walk with God, along with the skills he has given us, is what qualifies us as a worship team member. Okay, um, One and one point that comes under the personal life and testimony is a godly life. It begins with us being vessels of honor, living a life of holiness and consecration before God and maintaining a godly testimony before man. It begins with us being vessels of honor, living a life of holiness and consecration before God. Okay. Um, that's living a godly life. And next, the second point on the personal uh, life and testimony is your spiritual growth. Okay, so three areas that are pillars in our life where we need to continuously grow. And if you see this image here, you see the foundation, the foundation on uh, where on which your spiritual growth happens is you being a vessel of honor, a vessel of holiness, uh, a vessel of with good testimony. And on this foundation, you see three pillars being built. What are those pillars? One, God's word. Two, God's spirit. And then three, our individual area of skill. Okay, our individual area of skill. Okay. Uh, do you think it's important to grow in the word of God? Very important. Very important. Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, and I've, I'm not sure if, I, if I've mentioned this uh, uh, spiritual point before, uh, please forgive me, but I'm just reminded of, again, the story of David, uh, one of the biggest names that comes every time when we speak about worship, uh, and whatnot, right? You know, it, it says in Second Samuel chapter six, uh, we know that David was a very passionate worshiper, right? A passionate worshiper. And Second Samuel chapter six, it says that David uh, goes and brings the Ark of the Covenant back from the Philistines, right? And the first time, what happens? They put the Ark of the Covenant. On what? On a bull cart, on a cart, right? Uh, now this by now David has, is is a king. Uh, he's been anointed. He, he's a king of Judah and Israel, now, right? Now God tells something. He God prophesies something for almost four hundred years before Israel asks for a king. How many years? Four hundred years, right? For, 430 odd years or so. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, okay, Deuteronomy chapter 17, we are not going to read that, but you can make a note of it and read it for yourself later. God very clearly says that when you decide to have a king, just like uh, because you've seen the other nations and other nations have king and then you ask for a king, the king of all the responsibilities that he's supposed to do, one of the main responsibilities of a king was that he would make a copy of the word of God and he would read the word of God in the presence of the priests, the Levitical priests. And so, something tells me that David as a king did not do that because if had he read the word of God as a king should have, he would know that the Ark of the Covenant was not supposed to be put on the cart. It was meant to be carried by the Levites. And had King had David done that, one life would have not been, you know, killed or dead. You get what I'm saying? So, uh, and it's not so. 
it's not enough that you know especially this generation is like uh, you know not enough just calling ourselves being i'm a passionate worshipper i love worship i love worship it's passion it's my passion it's my passion i love worship i love it i love it i love it i love it and uh, no passion no absolutely no passion for the word of god you get what i'm saying yeah so uh, on the foundation of us being a vessel of honor of holiness and good testimony one of the key pillars spiritual growth that needs to happen is to see yourself growing in the word of god if the word of god does not excite you then something is dangerous something is not right okay so ask yourself this question does the word of god excite you does it does it just bring joy to you and do you want to see yourself grow in it okay secondly uh god's spirit growing in the spirit okay uh I, let me see if i can get this um so in line with this first pillar the first one god's word uh you know a, a reference point that you can as a, as a footnote you can make a note of is colossians 3:16 right colossians chapter 3 verse 16 is let the word of christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to god okay so as a worship team member as you sing the songs of god as you play your music let the word of god richly dwell in you right um and then we all know this uh, once again another uh, famous scripture in ephesians chapter 5 right ephesians chapter 5 it says uh do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery Ephesians 5 chapter 5 verse 18 do not be drunk with wine but instead be filled with the spirit instead be filled with the spirit okay uh, those are two different commandments and if if I, if I were to ask you uh, if you ask any christian uh, are you following this commandment oh yes yes absolutely you know uh, don't be drunk with wine yes of course i'm a christian i don't do that i don't you know but are you obeying the second half of the commandment that is are you being filled with the spirit so with this same glass you know you can i can fill it with wine and say okay no i'm not i'm not uh, I'm not drunk with wine, so I just throw it off. And now this glass is empty uh, because you have not obeyed the second half of the commandment, which is being filled with the Spirit. Now, if your glass is empty, and if it is not being filled with the Spirit, it can be filled with something else. Not just necessarily wine, isn't it? So it's very important for us to be filled uh, with 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 this holy spirit of the lord okay and and finally our individual area of skill the third pillar our individual area of skill what are you doing to invest in yourself to grow in the skill and the gift and the talent god has placed over you and god has given you right are you guys with me so in addition to learning and receiving what is being ministered at APC as your local church, we also encourage you to read widely. Okay, we encourage them to read uh, uh, established authors, uh, you know, listen to other preachers and worship leaders and grow spiritually in your walk with God as a worshiper. And then finally, uh, I, you know, we have a personal life of worship. Most important is a life of personal worship. I cannot lead people in worship if I am not a worshiper. I need to be a worshiper in private if I'm lead to worship in public. 
right? I cannot lead people in worship if I'm not a worshiper. I need to be a worshiper in private, okay? Uh, David could not have killed Goliath in public if he, had, if he did not kill a lion and a bear in private when nobody saw. And when he tells that I can take on Goliath, uh, Saul asks him, how can you do this? You're still a boy. And David says, uh, you know, when, when a lion or a bear took my father's sheep, I went after it and I struck it and I rescued my lamb. Right. Um, so if you can kill your lions and your bears in private, God will let you kill a Goliath in public. So that's a very important point on personal life of worship. How is it? Uh, is it in check? Uh, growing in skill and worship. Uh, worship team members must continuously grow and work on developing their skill as singers, musicians, worship leaders. It's the same thing uh, emphasized in this pillar as growing in skill, in our individual area of skill. Okay. Um, in addition to serving at APC, as your schedule permits, we encourage you to engage with other Christian bands, ministries outside APC to learn from and enhance your skills in worship, uh, to take private classes, uh, to go for singing classes, go for guitar classes, go for keyboard classes, uh, drums, whatever it is, uh, you know, learn. And finally, growing in Christ-likeness and serving with humility. Growing in Christ-likeness and serving with humility. And remember, all of these points are talking about just one thing, our personal life and testimony. Okay, Your personal life and testimony will be seen with the godly life that you lead, with the spiritual growth in your life, and your personal life of worship. And are you growing in skill? And worship and finally are you growing in Christ likeness and serving with humility okay when you humble yourself before the Lord that is called humility when someone else humbles you it's called humiliation right so it is the first one is better than the latter isn't it you we, we don't want to be humbled by someone else that is humiliation but instead, what is better is humbling ourselves before the Lord. Okay, worship team members must grow in Christ-like character. What was his character? One of the key important things that he humbled himself, even to the death and death on a cross, and maintained the heart of a servant to serve with humility, regardless of their gifts and abilities. Right? Like I said, Musicians are very sensitive people, uh, very, can be very egotistical as well. I said, you know, I'm better than you. Uh, how can you come and take my place? I've been playing this keyboard for 15 years. Um, that's my spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, those, those attitudes like that are a big no-no. Okay, we ought to pursue a humility of Jesus. Um, Okay, our identity is not in our giftings. So let's be comfortable in who we are in Christ. Amen. So serve with excellence and in a way that the Lord is glorified. I will end this session with this line. Okay. Serve with excellence and in a way that the Lord is glorified. Okay. Um, so I'll stop here. Uh, any thoughts, any questions? Okay. Was that helpful? Were you able to take away something? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, and so we'll continue to learn as we, uh, you know, uh, progress as we go on okay so thank you all for joining guys you guys uh, take care stay safe and uh, if you can download the PDF of uh, the power of commitment um, and uh, we, I'll, I'll share that link with you so that you can download it right away okay there you go
Thank you, everybody. I'll stop the recording now. I'll see you all next week. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Very helpful today. Thank you, Thomas. Take care.